Lavender Town Syndrome, otherwise called the Lavender Town Conspiracy, or the Lavender Town Tone, is a progression of creepy pasta stories and recordings that detail a conspiracy to conceal mass kid unalivings. These unalivings were supposedly brought about by listening to the main variant of the Lavender Town theme in the Japanese adaptation of the Pokemon Red and Green games. You might be wondering what is a creepy pasta? Creepy pastas are horror-related legends that have been shared around the internet. Creepy pasta has since become a catch-all term for any horror content posted onto the internet. These internet entries are often brief, user-generated paranormal stories intended to scare readers. Presented in Pokemon Red and Green, Lavender Town is the assigned graveyard for perished Pokemon and is known for its phantom sightings. The main version of these games was delivered in Japan in February 1996. When the games were delivered in the United States two years after the fact, the original music for Lavender Town, created by Junishi Masuda, had been changed. Since the feel of the town was that of a graveyard, the music was moderately frightening. The primary version of the creepypasta story was uploaded to Pastebin on February 21, 2010. It expressed that after the initial release of Pokemon Red and Green in Japan, there were more than 100 unalivings among gamers ages 10 to 15. During the examination, the detective presumed that the music that played in Lavender Town, thanks to a mystery code included in 104 of the first cartridges, was driving kids to unalive themselves. A few different versions of the first pasta were transferred to Image Shack, individual blocks, and paste bin among April and July 2010. Different versions range from scientific studies pulled from a course reading, to a meeting with the art director of the games, who guaranteed Satoshi Tajiri asked creators to just include the song for the red version. Through 2010, the copy pasta was talked about on Pokemopolis, different video game forums including the Mario Kart Wii forums. IO Gaming Community and GameSpot, and was characterized on Urban Dictionary. In 2011, an adaptation of the story was added to the Creepypasta Index. The story keeps on being asked about on Yahoo Answers, with more than 20 inquiries about it posed since April 2010. Three elements have been observed in these Lavender Town Creepypasta. The White Hand Sprite, the Buried Alive Sprite, and the Ghost Animation. They claim to be the driving factors besides the eerie song behind driving these Pokémon playing children to their untimely demise. The creepypasta go into detail about these three supposed occurrences. Referred to in the code as White Hand Donjif, this was scripted to show up as a Pokémon on the third floor of the Lavender Tower. It is isolated into four separate animations. An introduction, an idol, and two attacks. These attacks are obscure, as they are recorded essentially as fist and brutal. While viewing the animation has been shown to be perilous, viewing the frames of the model has been demonstrated to have no adverse effects. The white hand is portrayed as a withered, marginally rotted hand, with amazing detail. Tissue is stripping back from the bone, and a few ligaments hang reasonably out of the wrist. The main assault is the hand balling into a fist then at that point, swinging forward. Be that as it may, the brutal animation is feeling the loss of a few frames. The hand appears to open up, then, at that point, removes. Following a couple of moments, it returns, shut once more. No record has been found of these missing frames. The ghost animation, coded as haunting.swf, was expected to be put in a few regions all through the tower, including in the focal point of a path on the subsequent floor. Notwithstanding, Players can't interact with it, leaving many to accept that it was planned as a background feature. The ghost animation also should be seen in individual frames. It is comprised of 59 frames altogether. Be then as it may, after extraction, around half of these frames have been uncovered to be the standard ghost model utilized in pocket monsters. Around a fourth of the excess frames are contained static, to create a blurring effect. Nonetheless, interspersed with these eruptions of static are a few frames of shouting faces, alongside pictures of a skeletal man in a shroud and of a few slain bodies. The importance behind these are obscure. While after swearing to tell the truth before the Video Games Commission board, lead programmer Hisashi Sagebe affirmed as to having no information concerning where these pictures surfaced. Regularly alluded to as its code, the Berry Man script. The Buried Alive model was to be found on the final story of the Pokémon Tower, 
in what has now been replaced with the Marowak ghost, as indicated by the scripts assigned to it. The buried alive model was planned to be the boss of the tower. When reaching the highest level, the accompanying discussion would have occurred. You're here and trapped, and I'm lonely, so lonely. Won't you join me? After this, the battle would have been started. Once in battle view, the buried alive model seems, by all accounts, to be a rotting human cadaver endeavoring to creep out of the ground. It has been programmed to have two white hands, a Jengar, and a Muk. For some odd reason, a convention for the Buried Alive's activities after it was defeated were not composed. On account of the player overcoming him, the game would freeze. Be that as it may, a particular ending was composed by an obscure programmer after losing the battle. In this consummation, the Buried Alive was to have expressed, finally, new meat. Trailed by a few lines of drivel, he was to have then hauled the player character into the ground encompassing him. The scene would wrap up with a normal game over screen. Nonetheless behind the scenes, a picture of the buried alive person eating up the player was to have been shown. Particularly peculiar are the conventions for after this scene. The cartridge was to download this picture to the small internal memory contained in the Game Boy, overriding the title screen that typically went with a Game Boy turning on. Instead, at whatever point it was turned on, the player would see this picture as the sound document static mesh dot wave was played. The planned reason for this effect, unlike many number of different variables driving towards Lavender Town Syndrome, is obscure. 